So Bitcoin, uh, the inventor of Bitcoin created two things. One was the one. application. Satoshi. Yeah, the, the group. Uh, one was the application Bitcoin, and the other thing was the underlying technology, the blockchain. So in 2012, I and many others in the space uh, decided that we should put more applications on this um, trustworthy, uh, shareable, collaboration-enhancing database system. What I don't understand, I guess, Joe, is because you are a platform, again, you're not a currency, you can, you can, have, you can do transactions, you can make smart contracts that, that execute automatically. Why do you have a price? Why is there sort of a, a per share price of Ethereum? You're not a currency. What's the value associated with? Uh, for the same reason oil has a price. Uh, oil is a fuel that powers the global platform, global commerce platform. Um, the Ether token uh, is used to pay for computational steps and storage operations on the decentralized application platform that is Ethereum. DAO, we're going to hear a lot about those coming in the next few years, I suspect. Yeah, so, so, Joe... I think for me, sometimes it helps if you talk about what's being built on top of this, right? So this is a technology, it's a computing language, and I can build an app on it. So talk to me about some of the cool stuff that you're building at Consensus. So a tremendous variety of things. Um, supply chain, uh, different uh, decentralized tokenization systems. Uh, I know you're a fan of one particular system called Viridium. Uh, Viridium's a, a platform for tokenizing natural capital assets. Uh, what, does that, what does that mean, guys? I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my brain is smoking right now. Give us a real-world explanation for what things, that means. Things like uh, forest carbon, biodiversity, water. Uh, you can tokenize these assets, put them on these platform, this platform and make them tradable. Uh, so it, it makes externalities and supply chains tangible so that they can be surfaced, traded, uh, and... Um, calculated into the sustainability. So Brian so, Kelly has a financial, uh, you have a financial I'll, business, I'm your customer, I'm your client. Right. How would we use Ethereum I'll give in you a, a transaction between you and I? Let's pretend we're two oil companies and we want to trade oil. Okay. Okay. And I'm we have bigger than you are. Uh, obviously. Okay. Okay. So we, so we all, all year long we're trading oil, but at the end of the year we have a carbon footprint. So we need to get rid of that carbon footprint. We go out and we buy carbon credits. With this particular project, which I'm an advisor on an investor, so people should know about that, with this particular project called Viridium, what we're doing is we're backing a currency with carbon credits from a forest in Borneo. Now I can price our oil trade between you and me in these carbon credits in Viridium, and I've created a carbon-neutral oil trade. So it's all in one package. It reduces the friction. It makes it easier on the big companies to do it. Uh, it's better, faster, cheaper. Is it reportable? I mean, let's just be clear, Joe. I mean, governments want to know how much money we're transacting right. so that they can take their share, right? Everything's got the footprint because somebody wants to take their little slice of heaven. Yep. Is that a reportable transaction? Are we sort of, quote, of off the grid? No, um, cryptocurrencies and blockchain-based assets are much more trackable. Uh, than, um, than paper money, let's say. So it's actually more reportable. Exactly. And then how do you, because again, Bitcoin, we've got, and it's very important for the audience to understand the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain. Blockchain is the thing you're going to hear about from everybody. Bitcoin is kind of this, this I hate to use the term currency or asset because we can get into well, that debate yeah. all day long. You are a plat. Form yeah. that like, would be best like a decentralized would, worldwide. Way. Is there any okay? So, are is there anything analogous to it out there that that in in online or offline that our audience would best relate that to? Well, you can think of Ethereum as the decentralized worldwide web. Um, people aren't really going to be using blockchain; they're just going to be using applications. So, people will continue to use the World Wide Web. It's just uh, building decentralized versions of applications will enable us to do things. Uh, in a more trustworthy way, and it enables use cases that uh, aren't enabled. In so are you the Tim Berners-Lee of blockchain then? I mean, is that who we... I'm not. A guy named Vitalik Buterin might be. He's like 23. He... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, so, so on this, I mean, would it, be, would it be all right to call this almost like the Apple App Store in a sense, where people go on there, build an app on top of your platform, and then the world can use it? Is that a good analogy? Except it's not a walled garden. It, okay. it is like the World Wide Web, basically. Uh, anybody can permissionlessly upload an application, and people can use tiny slices of this Ether token to pay for the use of those applications. 
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.